All right, this is a continuation of the last unit, or excuse me, last lesson, where we're going to finish off joints. Last time, we did fibrous joints, which are these three, sutures, syndesmosis, and gomphoses. We did cartilaginous joints, which are synchondrosis and symphysis. And then we finished it off with synovial. Synovial uh, joints have a lot of movement. Some of the joints actually have fluids. Fluid in your joints is kind of like oil and grease in a car. It prevents friction, allows for things to move uh, easily. The majority of the joints in your limbs, elbows, shoulders, wrists, fingers, toes, ankles, knees, hips, they're gonna be synovial joints and they can move very well. One of the joints we covered last time were plane joints. Now out of all six of these synovial joints, these ones don't move that well. It's kind of like perpendicular, like moving a, forward and backwards and side to side. These are mainly found in your wrists and ankles, so tarsals and carpals. Next are hinge joints. Those are easy. Elbows, fingers, uh, knees, toes. The cabinet doors on my cabinets are held together, are held on by hinges. Yes? What's like the structure? The structure? We're getting there. Okay. So now let's get to the pivot joint. The pivot joint is gonna be found in the elbow and the neck. Now I'm gonna turn on the camera so people at home can see this. So let's see if I can make this a little bigger. All right, so let's back this up just a little bit. Your hinged, or excuse me, your plane joints would be in your wrist. You really can't see them move that well. They basically move like this or that. That's about all the movement that you're gonna see in plane joints. Hinge joints are gonna be your elbow, your fingers, and they make this move. If you like FSU, you do that seminal chop. I don't like it very much, but it is what it is. Now, I wanna make sure you guys get this very clear, pay attention. These joints in your fingers, what I'm doing, those are hinge joints. But on your knuckles, See how I'm spinning like this? That's not a hinge. Now, Grace, can you tell me what two bones form a knuckle joint? Very good, metacarpal and phalange. This is a different joint we haven't done yet. But when my other, when the further down my fingers, these are hinges, this is a hinge, your toes and leg would be a hinge too. Going on, uh, these are gonna be made of cartilage and ligaments. Pretty much all of these guys are gonna be made of cartilage and ligaments. Um, they're held down by ligaments and the cartilage is preventing bone on bone friction. What do ligaments connect? Bone to bone, good. All right. Now, I personally think this might be the toughest one for you all to remember just because it's a, it's a weird name. Condylar joint. Here's how it looks, you ready? Look at the camera. Your fingers can do this at your knuckle and your wrist can do this at the base of your hand. This is a condylar joint. Now I need to make this very clear to you all. You have three phalanges in each finger except for your thumbs and three phalanges in each toe except for your big toe. This is a hinge joint. This is a condylar joint. There's a difference. The hinge joints are gonna be at your first joint it would deep into your finger. And then your condylar joint is where your finger meets your metacarpal. It lets you do the spinning motion and you can do it in your wrist as well. That's a condylar joint. Phalanges and uh, wrist and ankles. The uh, fifth one is only found in your thumb. Your thumb can do a lot of things. In fact, I'm asking one student in each anatomy class to take on my challenge of going the rest of the day without your thumbs. Anybody want to take me on on that challenge? What do we win? You win the ability to see what it's like to be a dog or a giraffe or a horse. No thumb. You won't be able to do this. So if you like to play your games, try doing it just like that. You play an instrument? Can you play without a thumb? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Cocky, you want to put some tape on it? I said probably not. Probably not. Ah, okay. Anybody want to put this on? All right. <laughs> Isabella, F. So I have you on video. Do I have your consent to put tape on your hands? Yes. This is your choice. Okay. So put your thumb on your side like this. You want to do both hands or one hand? You wear a lot of rings. You wanted to keep that hand free? <laughs> so I can write the notes. Good idea. What, you saying you already need your thumb? You don't want to try writing notes without your thumb? That's not fun. All right, let's do it. That's part of the challenge. Right, you're set to put this on here. Okay. I say this because a long time ago, you guys ever heard that Disney movie Up? You know, the dog, the dog. And you remember the cone of shame? This teacher in Pasco County had the cone of shame. You know, it's just a joke. It's just a prop. The kids say, can I wear the cone of shame? Sure, knock yourself out. Just took a picture of it. Parents saw it. Parent lost her mind. And the kids were saying, mom, it was a joke. Just calm down. So, just so want to make sure. I have 19 witnesses. I did not make Isabel put tape on her hands. And it's on YouTube, too. Proof. All right. So, how are we doing? You guys should see how she's writing right now. Let's, let's look at this. Where are you? How's it working out for you? Uh huh. All right. So your saddle joint is only found in your thumb because your thumbs can do this very important movements. All right. And lastly, we have probably the easiest one, this is what I have dislocated and it sucks, is your ball and socket joints. Your humerus to your scapula and your uh, femur to your coxal, which is your hip. Has anyone else ever dislocated a, um, a ball and socket joint? What have you dislocated, Halen? Shoulder, what were you doing? Football. Me too, high school football. Not fun, I hit the quarterback on our own team and I paid for it and I didn't like him. He was that kind of guy who was like, I'm the quarterback, you wanna buy me lunch, I'm the quarterback. I'm so special. Well, yeah, we'll see how special you are and how far you can fly. And then I knocked my shoulder out. Anybody else ever dislocated a joint? What have you dislocated, Eva? Your thumb? Do they have to pop back into place? You were six. Anybody else? Chris? You dislocated your finger. Were you six? Do you remember it? Yeah. Did you have to put it back into place? Yeah. You dislocated a finger doing golf? Oh, I fell into a sand. Ah, you yeah. felt that thing came out of nowhere. Yeah. So do you remember how that felt? Uh, not yeah, try getting your shoulder popped in. Anybody else? Noah? No? Your time will come. All right, so that is all there is for joints. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. I am going to give you all five minutes. And I'm going to ask you to study over your notes for five minutes. And I'm going to be calling some of you up to this skeleton. And I want you to point to where a particular um, joint is, okay? So five minutes. Yes, Alyssa. The what? The pivot joint? Okay, I'll show you on me. So you have a hinge joint in your hand. The pivot joint can do this. It's your elbow. It's also your neck. It's your elbow and your neck. All right, so five minutes. I want you guys to look over your notes. And I'm going to call some of you up totally randomly. And I need you to help me identify where the, some of these are found. And then we'll get into injuries. How are you doing, Isabel? Great. Great. Yeah. Great.
It's not okay. Okay. See, I have a thumb. I could do one hand. <laughs> Try one hand. It's that saddle joint in my thumb. Booyah. Come on, Noah. Without your thumbs, you're taking back about 300 million years of evolution. Isabella, can you pick up your rings? <laughs> Isabella, can you open the book to page 175 for me? Can you close, Ava, can you close your book? Close it. Can you open it up to 175 for me? Can you turn the book around and show me? Can you close the book and hold the book and show me that you're on page 175? Not you, Eva. Can you, can you hold it up and show me there on the page? <laughs> ah, thanks. All right, guys, let's do this. Okay, screen's going off. Or at least you're not going to be able to see this. All right, where's my list? Sloan, your first one up. Come on down. I knew you were going to call on me. Yeah, you're 18 other <laughs> Okay, so um, the first one I want to do is a hinge joint. Your first question is, is a hinge joint a fibrous, cartilaginous, or synovial joint? It is a synovial joint. Very good. Can you point to where a hinge joint would be? Close. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else? Yes. Yeah. What other body parts can do the hinge action? What is the hinge action? FSU chop, okay. So what else can do that? Not that one, that one. Oh, wrist, fingers. Uh, oh, 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 oh. What else? Fingers and what? Can your toes do it? You ever a piece of clothes with your toes? So tell me again, where are your joints found? The elbows, knees, toes. All right, now I'm going to record this. So you have it all straight? All right. Here we go. That's a song? Yeah. Isn't it head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Shoulders is ball and socket. All right. Come on. 
All right, here we go. This is just inexplicable. Work. Okay. All right, well, apparently this doesn't want to play, so let's just do this. You ready? Yes. Okay, Sloan, wave to your fans. Let's make sure it's recording. Just want to be sure. Yep, it's going. All right, so Sloan, your, hing your uh, joint was a hinge joint. Can you show us where in the skeleton? Let's bring this guy right here so everybody can see. Can you tell us what type of joint the hinge joint is and where they're found? It's a synovial joint. It's found in the elbows, uh, the knees, the toes, and then the fingers. And what action do they do? What movement can they do? The FSC movement. Yeah. Chop, chop. I don't like that move, but fair yeah. enough. All right, thank you. Why don't you pick somebody, Sloan? Lily. Lily, come on down, Lily. Don't apologize after you put her out there like that. All right, Lily, your joint is a gomphosis joint. Is that synovial, cartilaginous, or fibrous? Um, fibrous. Is it fibrous or fibrous? <laughs> I think it's fibrous? It is fibrous. Very good. So it's very tough. The, the fibers are very short. Where in the body would we find fiber or um or that uh, gomphosis joints? Your teeth. Your teeth. Lily, do you brush your teeth? Yes. Do you know what, what why do you brush your teeth? What are you trying to get rid of in your mouth? The bacteria. Bacteria. Do you know that bacteria can eat away at your gums? Do, and what's below your gums? Your bone. Your bone. Do you know the bacteria can actually eat into your bone? And that's called periodontal disease. And then you have to probably get fake teeth because, you know, the bacteria can actually get into the joints, the gomphosis joints of your teeth and cause your teeth to fall out by eating the ligaments. Brush your teeth. Yeah. All right, Lily, why don't you pick somebody, please? Scout. Scout. Come on down. All right, Scout. You have a symphysis. Is the symphysis cartilaginous, synovial, or fibrous? It is cartilaginous. Very good. Um, can you tell me where uh, the two symphysis joints are? Symphysis joints are made of fibrocartilage, so they're very, very tough. No. What do you call that particular uh, joint? Intervertebral disc. Close enough. Intervertebral discs. Um, and where's the other one? Back of the pelvis? Not the back. The other side. Pubic. The pubic synthesis. Can you point to it? Right there. That's the pubic synthesis. Good. That's fibrocartilage. Well done. Thank you. Why don't you pick somebody? Grace. Grace. Grace has that smile, like, I'm so happy she called me. All right, Grace. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ask you to identify sutures. Are sutures synovial, fibrous, or cartilaginous? They're, uh, fibrous. They're fibrous. Where are they found? They're in the skull. Like, like, here, so Can you move them very well? No. No. Do you think the fibers are long or short? They're short. They're very short. Hold them together. Good. That's, that's pretty much it. They're only found in your skull. Good, good, good. All right. Why don't you call somebody? No tag bags. They've gone. They've already gone. Isabella. Isabella. All right. The thumbless wonder. All right, Isabella, you have a pivot joint. Synovial fibers or cartilaginous? Um, almost like an S. I already forgot. Synovial fibers or cartilaginous? Synovial. Synovial. Um, can you point to us where the pivot joints can be found? In your elbows yeah. and your 
next. And what action can they do? Pick side to side. And what about your arms? Yeah, good. All right, why don't you pick somebody? I wonder who. Noah. Noah. Oh, I thought you were going to pick you. We've got none of the girls now. First guy. Let's go, Noah. Represent. Boy power. Oh, boy. I'll give you an easy one, okay? Where in the body, or actually what type of joint is a saddle joint? Is it synovial fibers or cartilaginous? Cartilaginous. It's not cartilaginous. Try again. Uh, what are the options again? Synovial, cartilaginous, or fibrous? Synovial. It is synovial. You can't move it. I'll give you a hint. There's only one body part. You have two of these body parts, but one body part where the saddle joint is found. Think of Isabella right now. Oh, the hands. Where in the hands? The thumb. The thumb. That's right, where the metacarpal for the thumb meets the wrist. Can you show us in the camera what type of actions it lets you do? What kind of motions? Use your own fingers. Move them around. Move them around. Can your thumbs do things that your other fingers can't? Yes. Can you give you know show a little effort here and show us some of the things your thumbs can do? Uh, do this. See what I'm doing? There you go. And then move, wiggle them around, swirl them around. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for making it awkward. All right. Why don't you pick somebody? Jack. You've been summoned. Who? Who's Jack? Oh, I dash Jackie. Who did you say first? Jackie. Jackie. Jackie, come on down. Jack, Jackie. All right, Jackie. We're going to hit it up. A kind of tough one. You got this. It's the only fiber joint left. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's fibrous. A syndesmosis joint. It's also, if you sprain this, it's a high ankle sprain. That should kind of narrow it down for you. Ankle. Where in the ankle? You can lift up his leg. It's okay. And we'll pee on you. Uh, That's it. Now, what two bones form that joint? Look on the other side. Once you grab the leg, the right leg that's closest to you. What two bones? What two bones form the high ankle? The tibia and the fibula. Very good. Can you point to in the camera for us? Lift up the leg a little bit so the camera can see because can't see the leg. Higher. Okay. Now, where in the ankle? Higher. Bend that knee. Come on. We got this. There, hold that. Can you point to it? That is where the syndesmosis joint is. That's where the tip and the fib meet. That is a high ankle sprain if you ever got one of those. Okay, good job. Thank you. Why don't you pick someone? We have a few left. Eva. Eva. All right, we have all the fibrous joints done. Let's do a synovial. I'm going to go and tell you it's a synovial. This is the one synovial joint that really doesn't move that well. They're called plane joints. Where are they? Your wrists. Can you show us on the skeleton? What bones are those? Uh, your carpals. Carpals. And where else? Uh, your feet. Where? Tarsals. Can you lift up the leg like Jackie didn't show us? These ones. Yes. Good. Those are plane joints. Okay. Just a few more to go. Why don't you grab, uh, pick somebody? Melanie, come on down, Melanie. All right, Melanie. I'm going to tell you it's a synovial joint. It's a ball and socket joint. Okay, I think. What two bones are those, Melanie? Um, humerus. Uh huh. Very good. Where's the other ball and socket joint located? Um, the knee. No, that's a hinge joint. My ball and socket. You got your shoulder. What's the, where's, oh, okay. there you go. What two bones are those? Uh, the pelvic and femur. Can you show us what sort of motion the ball and socket can do? Can you wave your, um, like you, can you wave your arms? Like that. What about your legs? I guess that's that's good enough. All right, good. Have a seat. Um, there's 
two more. We need two more people. So pick one. Damn. Damn. He's like, no. All right, Dan. This is the last synovial joint. A condyloid joint. Was it? It was wrists and knuckles, right? Where can you show us? Yeah, what two bones meet? Not the wrists and knuckles. Uh, are you, what, about you said wrists and knuckles. What two bones form the knuckle joints? I'm gonna say carpals. And no, uh, not carpals. Carpals is up here. Metacarpals. Metacarpals and what? Phalanges. Phalanges. Okay, what can they do? Yeah, they can do that. So you got your knuckles and then your wrists, your where your radius and your ulna meet your carpals. Can you show us on your body what they can do? All right, you can swirl your wrists around. What about your fingers? Swirl your fingers around. Good. Great. I need one more person. Can you pick somebody? Uh, one more person. No. Dylan. Left. All right, Dylan. Cartilaginous joint, synchondrosy. Okay. Where is it? It's where the ribs connect to the sternum. Anywhere else? Um, I went to the pediatrician today and he told me my growth plates are closing. Where are those? In the vertebrae? No. The knees? Getting warmer. Here. Okay. There's a line of little tissue called cartilage right there. And that can actually let your bones lengthen. But once that closes, that's going to be bone. You don't get any taller. So it's found in the first pair of ribs. And it's found down here in your epiphyseal plate. Called your growth. It's also called your growth plate. That's it. Thank you, everybody who participated. How much time we have left? Oh, we have time for some injuries. We don't get any until 34 after. We have about 10 minutes. Let's do some injuries, okay? All right. So let's switch it on over. All right, guys, we may not get through all this, and that's fine. Here we go. Uh, this is called injuries, degenerative and inflammatory disorders. We will not get to the degenerative and the inflammatory disorders today. That's going to be things like arthritis, gout, rheumatoid arthritis, Lyme disease. But today we'll do some things you actually do to get hurt. You run on base shore, you twist your ankle, you're in cheerleading, you get tossed up in the air and you tear your ACL, stuff like that. Now, for the sake of this video, everyone, I'm just going to kind of uh, fly through this so people online can get their notes. So I want you all to stop for a moment, just take a little breather because I'm almost out of time here. So I just want to make sure they can get this. So if you're watching this, you can press pause and get what you need. But I am limited with time. Okay. Um, if I go over here, here's some different uh, sprains, I want to mention for the video, grade one sprain is very, very minor tears, maybe none. A grade two is a larger tear, a grade three is a complete tear. And then in this knee, this is the posterior of your left leg. You can see the MCL, the ACL, the PCL, and the ACL. The PCL is in the back, the ACL is in the front, the LCL is on the outside of your leg, the MCL is on the inside of your leg. Okay, so for the video, I am going to have to stop because I'm almost out of time.